everybody. Welcome to We'd Rather Be Reading. I'm Jerrica. And I'm Leah. So what'd you do this week that you'd rather be reading? Oh, wait. (laughs) You just read and you didn't do anything else. (laughs) This is actually true. I only read. I was actually told off for reading too much this weekend, but it's because I fell into Fable. Yes. And then Namesake. And oh my God, I am in love, 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 love. I um, know. I have read so Fable good. last year. And you didn't want to read it because you, you read, knew no, that the you, second one was coming out. It must have been in the beginning of this year because I think it only, only came out this year, both of them. No, no, no. I read it last year. Really? Yeah. I thought it was this year because... Oh yeah, it came out in September. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. I... It's Fable and Namesake by Adrian Young. And I... Read them both in like two days, one day each. <laughs> <laughs> I listened to Fable last year and I was like, oh, you got to read this, but you were going to wait until the second one came out so you could do back to back. So you did what you I did. had. I did. And I think I, that was only an excuse because it's probably too busy reading uh, other stuff. Uh. But, but <laughs> regardless, uh, I did read them now and oh my God, they were so, 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 so good. And I'm actually really sad that we didn't do them for this part. Because mm-hmm. I would have loved to talk about them. But and I can talk about them anyway. Yes. Yay! <laughs> I haven't really read good. Namesake yet because uh, Leah got me into <laughs> and I long, 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 love story. <laughs> it's not a love story. Come on. I, and I am so Hate sorry story. for this. I am so, so, so sorry. It's... <laughs> The After series by yeah. Anna Todd. And I only started reading them because I saw that there's a movie on Netflix. I saw the trailer and I'm like, I feel like reading some trash. I'm going to read this book. <laughs> and then I did. And I couldn't put it down. And I was like, I, it, this is everything I hate. <laughs> it's literally every single thing I hate. It is, you know, practically sexual assault. It's uh, possessiveness. It's yeah. treating people like shit. It's continuous fighting, getting back together, fighting, getting it back together. Yeah. And... Not a single sane person in this entire book, really. They're all yeah. in need of serious uh, therapy. therapy. Yeah. They should not be together at all. No. They are so bad for each other. <laughs> and still, I made it through book one. I'm like, yes, jumping straight into book two, halfway through book two. And you were like, overtakes me first off. <laughs> what? <laughs> You were like, I'm devouring these books, but at the same time, you read Fable and Namesake, but I was only Not at the same on time. after. I read something else at the same time. What the frick did I read? That's, I read so it wasn't them that I was reading at the same time. You finished our um, book of oh, the yeah, week. Oh yeah, no, because I was reading A Court of Silver Flames. That's yes. it. Because I was listening to A Court of Silver Flames, and I was reading after. And these are very, very, very sexual books. Yeah. All of these. So it was a very <laughs> awkward week for me. I have to say. <laughs> You're like, kids, don't come in the room, mommy's don't reading. Don't talk to me. <laughs> and then, like, the kids are like, mom, and I'm like, take a mayor, but they're going, yes. <laughs> this is a shifting conversation. I am on board. Uh, mommy's busy right now. Very, very important stuff. <laughs> working, I'm working. <laughs> but A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass. This is one of my favorite book series uh, ever. So while you were devouring these books, I am savoring them, not the after series, of course. I'm devouring those things just to like get more the... than me at yeah, this point. But it's because I'm listening to them. So. I'm listening to it too now. And yeah. honestly, I read the first two and now I am listening to the third one. And she has the most annoying voice. I'm sorry. She is does. It? No, I think it's fine. It suits her. But I, th- I like his like, voice a lot. Because she is so annoying. I think she has an annoying <laughs> voice. She's so annoying. And this these books are... There's apparently four of them, too, which is... This is a serious <laughs> commitment. I have... You guys can't hours. see Leah right now, but she is wound up. She's also showing you the number four with her fingers. Of course. <laughs> I speak with my hands. Anyways, I have 15 hours left in book three, and I haven't even looked at how long book four is. I don't want to know at this point, because I was ready to give it up yesterday. I was ranting. <laughs> I can't believe you were going to give something up. That's so unlike you. It is unlike me. There has been really, really bad books. I mean, this one, at least we're following this couple the whole way. You can't not know what happens to their but relationship. I know what happened. I can predict these books. They're going to make up and break up and make up and break up and be mean and horrible to each other. Make the same mistakes over and over and over and over and over again. Learn nothing from it. <laughs> Learn nothing from it. Make up, break up. 
And either at the end they're all gonna die or they're gonna end up married with kids. <laughs> These are the only two alternatives I see, honestly. Yeah, but where you are in the book right now, like Hardin's, broken up. Hardin's path is towards death. Because and then I find that it's fan fiction and this, honestly... I know. When you told me it's fan fiction, first of all, you wrote, this is F.A. fiction. And then I started to because, guess, what's F.A. fiction? Because my phone tried to correct it to fab fiction. And then I had to go on annotation, and then it clearly my changes And I was like, oh, I don't know, like a category of books? How did I miss what's F.A.? Because Y.A., N.A., all this stuff. I was like, what's F.A.? So I'm... Try and you freaking said freaking awful fiction. Is what it is. That's you what it is. Said, you said it's for a fiction, awful one direction, and I was like, oh, is F A fiction where they take only one direction in the no, book? Does that mean timeline? Why does it mean character plot development based on the? I say band very loosely here. Boy band, pop act group. <laughs> Direction. And when you told me this I was fan fiction of One Direction, I was died. I was like, what? Am I reading fan fiction of One Direction? I can never tell my husband this. If no. Johan finds out, I told him that it's fan fiction and he was like, what's fan fiction? And I explained it to him. I, I left it at that. If I tell him this is fan fiction about Harry Styles and One Direction, he will just turn his head, and just shake it. I'm just going to have to delete this episode from James Bond. Like, it's just not going to happen. I'm sorry. You cannot listen to this. No. I am I am ashamed. I feel dirty. I so dirty. You're having some dirty-ass sex in this book, too. And I'm like, oh, noted. This and is good another stuff. Another thing here that I then figured out. I feel out. like an old lady. Yeah. And I also figured out here that the main girl... <laughs> and after looks exactly like the author, which then makes this her wet dream. Yeah, so now we're so like, now la, we're la, reading la, 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 her la. sexual <laughs> fantasies about Harry Styles, and it is uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. <laughs> and also, there's so much continuity in this one. There's so but much. But you gotta let that go. It's fan fiction. So now you know this is like not properly. No, but she wears two dresses like because that. she puts on one dress and another one. And so then some people she do misses wear the days. Dresses. And then <laughs> she true. she cannot move in because the dorms are full, but then she can the dorm would never fall. It is all over the place. The continuity is appalling in this book. It's like she, she never even read her own book. Okay, enough ranting about this. I am letting it go. I might still drop but them. But we, we <laughs> do say that we find a similarity in this in many, many books where the characters look like the authors. Oh, yes. And now we've decided as of today, after learning about Anna Todd's Wet Dream, which is her novel or book, <laughs> fan fiction, after series, um, that we're no longer ever going to look at the photo of the author. <laughs> because well, I will still do it. This no, is my guilty pleasure. No, I cannot do it anymore. I, I want to see the character as they describe it. When I see them... Which is like themselves, exactly. Except but maybe better version. Better. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, letting go, moving on. This is what I've been reading. What have you been reading this week, apart from the after... Silver well, flames. I am savoring Silver Flame. So I pick it up and I read like an awesome scene and I'm like, yes, I love this book so much. I'm reading it. Read, read. Normally I listen to books because I find it easier to multitask that way. But I am reading this and I am loving it. Like, so I hold, should I spoil like, it off? Don't you? do it. <laughs> don't you dare. I like make a cup of tea. I sit in a little corner. I read a couple chapters and I'm like, hmm. I can't wait, like, to for this next book. But, um, no, I really love Silver Flames by Sarah J. Maas. And that whole Court of Thrones series is, it's my favorite series. So I'm savoring Silver Flames. Uh, I'm probably, like, 80% done it. But I, like, you know, when it's, like, your favorite thing, you're like, no, I don't want this to end. So. Oh, no, I, I cannot savor things like this. Like, I, no? am, I am an all or nothing kind of person. It's mm. the same with candy. I need to eat it until it's done. And oh. if it's in the house, it needs to be eaten so I don't have to think about it anymore. Oh. So if it's a book that I really like, I will rush it through to the end and then I will restart it from the beginning and read it one more time and find all of the stuff that I missed in my first reading. Oh. And I do this. And then some books I read, like like the Holly Black books. We mm -hmm. talked about those before. The mm -hmm. Cruel Prince. I've read that book like four times at this point. Okay. And every time a new book comes out in the series, I will reread from the beginning. Up I until... would reread Court of Thrones books for sure. I would also reread all of the Grisha books. Yeah. 
which we might have to because we are going to start up on those fairly soon. Uh, yeah. The rule of uh, no, the king of scars and rule of wolves. But so then I've been um, reading after or listening to after, and I was on a ski trip, and sometimes I was listening to it, and I'm like, oh, it's my family I should put this down <laughs> because it it gets quite sexual because she's a virgin, and he has to teach her all of the things, which is another one of my hate things: the sexual education yeah. of the virgin girl. I really, what my biggest pet, I, I don't mind the education part. I think like that's kind of hot a little bit. But what I don't like is when the virgin girl doesn't know her body at all. It's like, oh, what's that? You're touching the apex of my thigh, Always the bundle apex. of nerves in between my thighs. I know we talked about bundle of nerves before, but that's a really uh, common thing that authors write for the clitoris. Yes. Um, <laughs> I don't know why they can't just outright say it. But they do in this book, in the after book. Uh, they talk about clitoris all the time. But anyways, um, I don't like it when the virgin, like, doesn't even know that she has uh, private parts. <laughs> and she's no. like, oh, excuse me, what's this? But I have to do say. I have an opening? <laughs> wow. Yeah, no. Have you never but seen I have your to body? say, though, I, I have she's some... 18. Pets. At 19 now. I, I had know. some peeves about this this book series for a bit. Uh, we've talked about most of them. But one of the things that I kept writing to you about was the fact that Hardin, the main guy, he seems really obsessed with what she's wearing. And he literally <laughs> cares about all of her dresses and the way all of her pants. Like, he has opinions on every single shirt and he has his favorites and he's all like... And I'm like, who? But now when I know it's Harry Styles, this all makes sense to me. So, yeah, he's yeah. obsessed with clothes. He is obsessed with clothes. Yes, yeah. and he wears black all the time, especially Sometimes black white, jeans. white t-shirts. Yeah, yeah, but black jeans. And then Hardin chooses a pair of blue jeans because they're the only clean ones. You, oh, you're not there yet. this has not happened yet. No, it hasn't happened yet. And he's like, I can't wear these fucking jeans. <laughs> and it's like, oh, yeah. Oh. And also, they live in Washington, and it's snow, but no one wears coats. <laughs> okay, no one like, wears tights. Everyone is out. The book's not in... about that. And, but she makes a point out of saying, oh, it was so much snow, and the snow came down hard, and I'm going to go out, so I'm going to put on my high heels and my little summer dress here with no coat. <laughs> it's a little bit cold to be waiting outside without a coat. And I'm like, no shit, Sherlock. It's freaking snowing outside. <laughs> of course it's too cold for it. Maybe you do need to put these books down. <laughs> they rile you up too much. They do. But the, uh, anyways, I, have, I have been busy this week, and I went to a yoga wine retreat also. So I haven't been reading too, too much. Just three just three <laughs> after books and one or 80% of Silver Flames. No, Imagine I finished reading. how much you could have read if you had done none of those other things. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see what I mean? <laughs> I'm already very good at multitasking. But uh, you have read probably eight books this week. So that's that's maybe right. where that's maybe where I'd be at if I only focused on reading. It feels a little bit excessive, honestly. Like, that was a little like, much. It, it feels a little much. And now... <laughs> And now because I'm so angry with this book that I'm listening to and, and the, the new book which we're gonna talk about later, it's 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 quite a shift from these books that I've been reading lately. So it's it's yeah. taken my mind a little bit of a of time to catch up yeah. with what the frick's going on in this one. But we'll get to that later. So now, I finished also William Moore, which is the book of the week. Yes. The Unlife of William Moore by Dana Lockhart, which was, again, our first gifted book, and we were very excited to read it. Um, so last episode, we had read the first three chapters, and we did some predictions. So mm -hmm. now we're going to see how well we did on our predictions. Oh. I cannot actually... Uh, remember my prediction. Well, I, I did. I remember that I predicted love and that the book would be more or less a relationship story, but I was mm -hmm. not hundred percent correct. You predicted everyone I, dies. I did predict they would both die in the end. Yeah, and uh, that and also I did, did predict happen. love. Um, mm. So, and I did also predict uh, other vampires trying to get to Kayla and Billy needing to save her. This okay. was in my prediction. And these predictions were all true apart from the die in the end. Right. So, yay! 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 So, good. <laughs> uh, so what happens in this book is this evil vampire, Alexandre, hmm? 
turns up, and he was the companion of the female vampire that turned Billy into a vampire. So and she was really evil, seventy years brutally, ago. Brutally, like, and she was horrible. Him. Like yeah. she scratched him, leaving all these these Marks, scars on yeah. him and stuff. So he he's not so pretty when he's a vampire. But it's like, oh, boy. like I yeah. have like jitters just thinking about it. Poor little yeah. boy, because he was something like eighteen ish when that was. Oh, happening. he's young, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Alexandra then has this this obsession with Billy because he keeps trying to hunt him down. It's unclear what for though no he it's just, it, he just wants to tease him or annoy him or no no he's jealous because he was this like blood partner with the woman who turned yeah billy. but he doesn't want to kill billy he just wants to hunt him he keeps following him and he keeps being around and he keeps taunting him but he's not actually trying to kill him so it's kind of like he just wants to be as annoying to billy as he possibly can and never leave him alone but he hates him because yeah of of the ex girlfriend yeah uh and but she left him anyway for another one of the people she sired hopefully yeah. she did not brutally abuse that guy <laughs> but who knows <laughs> we, don't, we know. don't know we don't get to meet but, her but this uh book is very much about the two main characters yeah uh, billy the, and kayla billy and kayla the vampire but and the non-vampire girl. then it's also about adam who's a guy in yeah. kayla's class and he turns out to be a vampire hunter uh, who is uh, part of this vampire hunting team that's run by their professor, mm. which felt very Buffy-like, the professor running the vampire killing team. Mm. Um, and Adam is trying to protect Kayla, but Kayla doesn't really want to be protected. She's like, look, I like Billy. I want to keep seeing him. And Adam's like, hmm, you should not go out at night. Oh. And he tries to like make her spend all this time with him when he knows that she's going to see Billy because he has figured out what Billy is. So there's a little bit of a love triangle here, and you said you do not predict love triangle, and I there is a love triangle. About this. Yeah, <laughs> finally a love but, triangle. But, but Kayla doesn't really like Adam like that. She but likes she him likes him a little, yeah. Um, and I think Adam is warding her house because Billy can no longer show up there. So there's a couple yeah. of weeks where he doesn't show up when he says he will, and then she gets upset and worried, and then she goes and tries to find him. So. Adam's attempts at protecting her is actually putting her in more danger because instead of Billy just coming over and then being safe in her house, she then goes to these unsafe places like the graveyard mm. or in the park where they keep getting attacked by Alexander. Um, and uh, But I like Kayla a lot. I think the main character here, she stood up for herself. She had all of her own like thoughts and was never... Um, wooed too much by the vampire no. William Moore, which she calls Billy. Uh, she was, in fact, just like taking the lead most of the time. You're you're doing this now. We're doing this. You are coming to a Halloween party with me, and he's like, Ugh. yeah, yeah. No, but she helps get him out of his shell, and she really yeah. wants to. She wants to know him, and I mean. He um, he's very uh, shy in a way, like mm. or he doesn't. He's never let himself get close to anyone. He's just surviving. He's not really living. He's no. just surviving. Yeah, and and she makes him feel like she, he's living again. Because, she makes him feel like a person again, yeah. and not just a, a, a being. From simple like nice humanity, like yeah. conversation and care and mm-hmm. things like that. There's no like over the top completely predictable stuff in this book and one of the things that drew us to it uh to the conversation with dana lockhart to to have this book to read for our pod was that she first of all we love vampire stuff so sold yes. <laughs> of course <laughs> anything having to do with some sort of romance also we like but uh the fact that she had said that this was a trope free vampire story and uh, that was so intriguing. And mm-hmm. so the whole time I'm like waiting for the trope, like she's going to turn into a vampire. But she yeah. didn't. Uh, and I have to say, Dana was right. It is a trope-free book, uh, a vampire love story. And I I liked it a lot. And the ending, though, made but me it, feel like this happens. was just the beginning of the story and that there was a lot more story yeah, left. Because be Alexander told. comes and he takes Kayla away, so Billy and Adam <laughs> has to team up to rescue her. Mm. Um, and um, Adam only hel- agrees to help Billy if Billy erases Kayla's memory of him and he leaves her. Yeah. Uh, and then they kill Alexander together, and yeah. then Billy makes Kayla forget, which he had promised her he would never do. Yeah. And then it kind of jumps to six months later where she's she feels like she has lost something, but she doesn't. Yeah. Know why, and yeah. then um, Adam is leaving, and and her other friend Alyssa is leaving because they're ending 
college, college. like they graduated yeah. and then Billy shows up again and I really like this ending the fact that he comes back and he's like waited for for them to go away and then he wants to to build this this with her again but I I, I also feel like it could have been a bit longer. Like I would have, hmm. in a way, I would have liked to have dwelled a little bit more in those six months, yeah. you know, of this. It's a little bit like, um, I mean, I guess we're going into trope here, but in Twilight, when when Edward leaves and Bella is just so broken, mm. like it's it's uh, it's almost a half a book of her just missing him. Yeah, yeah. And in a way, it could have been more of that, like this sense of missing something that you don't For even know feel, what it is. Like, feel the despair. Yeah. And then him coming back and us feel the relief of yeah. him coming back. But I think it's also interesting, the whole... Um, the fact that she would miss something, but if she wouldn't know what. But that's a, that's interesting. But I, I like that also. And I think that... Maybe if this is just the first book, yeah. then uh, the second part of this love story can be that, yeah, he visited her on her graduation, but that was it. And that now she lives for the next few years without him, still feeling like missing something, maybe having another relationship that, you know, something's missing in that too. And then he comes back and they develop their... I'm okay with reading that. <laughs> if you want yeah. to write a second book of okay, their love story. Come on, we need a second book. Just, <laughs> just get on this. this. Uh, I want more Billy. We're, we're, we're impatient. We read fast. So... Yeah. You know, Get on tick it. Tick tock, tick tock. <laughs> but um, thank you so much for this book. We really highly recommend it for anybody who wants to read a trophy vampire love story. Yes. Um, the Unlife of William Moore by Dana Lockhart. Uh, and then we move on now. And the book we have mo- chosen to move on to is The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. And we're going to start judging this book by its cover. And this is going to be a bit hard because I see no less than one, two, three, four... Five, six, <laughs> seven, eight, nine covers? What? No, not even possible. All right. One. Okay, mine two, is... Two, three, four, five, yeah, six. Two. Okay, I'm on... I have the sixth yeah. one. Um, I am listening to this book uh, through iBooks, The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern, and uh, Leah is reading, reading it. it. Yes. So we will get a couple perspectives of this uh, book from that. I uh, am listening to it, and the narrator is an older man, kind of uh, what you can assume can be like the leader of the circus or something like that. These two covers are very similar. It's just that one's got a tent in the background. This one doesn't. Mm-hmm. So on the cover, <clears throat> on the cover that you have, yep. it's it's a man so- and a woman, a woman in a dress. Um, and a hat and a man in a in a in a nice he's fancy dressed with a everything is in hat. black and white and he's got an umbrella and there's a red scarf um everything is black and white other and, than her red scarf and there's a, a a bird flying away from him and in between them there's a black and white circus tent and of her dress there's a couple things that you could kind of see a part of it yep the cover that i have is this one yep which is a palm of a hand with a, a circus in it, with those circus tents mm-hmm. um, and the clock. That's well described. Uh, and then there's another few covers that are variations of this one. I think this is a bit rare. Mm-hmm. It is a... It's a woman bent over a flower. <clears throat> sort of anime looking. Yeah. She's and she's wearing girl. like a rose dress uh, that yeah. turns red at the very, very bottom of it as if she's and bleeding. Ribbons, yeah. Um, and then looking at these covers, what would you say this this book is about? It's about a circus. I mean, there's a circus tent. It's about a circus. I would say this old timey, the way that they're dressed. Yes. Just the uh, cap and the... Um, umbrella cane kind of thing this thing is going to be a mix in between the other two covers so mm-hmm. here hair is loose he looks the same but uh, i would say it's old timey something around uh, early 1900 setting mm-hmm. circus life and obviously there's going to be a love story i'm going to say that just based on the this woman and this man the way she's mm-hmm. turned towards him and the way he's turning like, his head towards her yeah. like there's this but but also probably a ripping apart, like mm. not coming together. They're walking away from each other, but mm. they're clearly drawn to each other. Mm. So I'm going to go ahead and say this is a love story about That's a circus. That's a good one. Mm? Um, and we have read, we think we have read we the first three <laughs> chapters. Turns out these freaking chapters have no numbers. So this was a little <laughs> bit of a, of a difficulty here. Um, 
But I have read to what I am going to assume is about the third <laughs> chapter. I have track three and I'm like, mm, no, that's not where <laughs> chapter three is. I'm not sure. No. Uh, so it was a little bit dis- difficult to decide when we should stop reading here. But um, it starts on with the first uh, chapter talking about this night circus. And mm-hmm. what happens is it just magically kind of appears in a field. And it's 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 not one tent, it's many tents. Mm. And it's fenced in with a sign that says the circus will open at dusk and it will close at dawn. Uh, and then the whole town is just kind of gathering around. And and it, this first chapter is uh, is written from the perspective of, of us, the readers, actually being there and, and like waiting to get in and being excited That's about so cool. this, which was really nice, I found. Uh, but we don't get to go in <laughs> at this point. Um, and then we move on to this magician... Prospero, um, that's his stage name, mm-hmm. Prospero the Enchanter, and his real name is Hector Bowen. And he gets this this, this letter that's attached to this little girl. So mm-hmm. she's this just this five-year-old girl that has a letter attached to her coat. And the letter basically says, this is your daughter, she's your problem now. Her name is Celia. And mm-hmm. his first reaction was, Ugh, she should have named you Miranda. <laughs> <laughs> And then the girl just deciding that, no, I'm only answering to Celia, which yeah. is apparently going to be a, it's a, a thing. bit of a running yeah. gag. Um, and she's showing some kind of magic skill here, so he decides to train her. And then we meet up with them again, like an eight months later, when Hector is meeting up with this man in this grey suit who gives his name Alexander, which Celia says is not his real name. Right. Uh, and they're going to do a competition. There's no Something time like limit no. on when it needs to start, but Hector's going to make Celia compete in this. And mm. the other, the man in the gray suit, Alexander, he needs to find someone to compete with. And he gets, there's no time limit, and he gets to make the first move. Okay. So when he makes the first move, then the competition will have started. Uh, and he seals this by putting this ring on Celia's hand, and it just burns into her skin yeah. and disappears, leaving yeah. this mark on her, like, brands her. And then he sets off to an orphanage to find himself a child to compete with. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and this is where I stopped. So I was like, all right, what will happen? I in know, this, this is so hard I to know. I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> like, I get that Celia is important. And the other child, which we don't even have a name for, is probably also important. And... Mm. I'm thinking because of the no time limit thing to this, we're probably going to jump into the future where they're more grown up, I'm thinking. So this is not going to be a competition between children, but more grown ups. Okay. That was my guess. Um, And I think the book is probably going to be about their competition. Uh, Okay. I'm not entirely sure where the circus fits into this, but I'm pretty sure that Celia and this boy will probably fall in love. Oh. These are my predictions. Great. Yes. That's so what do you cool. think? <laughs> I don't I honestly don't know, but I didn't see the, the book being about a competition thing as the entire plot. I thought it was going to be about circus and she's going to be then like the star of the circus and then they're going to have like a traveling circus and then they're going to find this boy that they were training uh, and then at that circus that they make like a new business concept, they do the competition for audiences. All right. And I'm not sure if if they fall in love, but I don't know how old they're going to get. But if they get over the age of 18, I approve love. (laughs) (laughs) Because he's five at this point. Yeah. (laughs) And I think the boy that they find is about nine-ish. So there's a... a, Age gap there. (laughs) It's a little bit, but not too much. Like you make them... You make them in their twenties, and there's nothing. No, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. no real age cap anymore. Mm. So this is this is what I think, and I'm actually quite excited to read this book. It's been on my it's list so for like different. a long time. Yeah, and it's actually well written, which you know is nice. So wow. <laughs> <laughs> After all the continuity problems we've been experiencing lately. Um, <laughs> so this is a refreshing, uh, intelligent read. Yes. Uh, the Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. Yes. Uh, follow along with us. Uh, and if you have uh, a spare 80 hours, <laughs> then you can listen to after and comment and tweet us uh, and send us messages uh, about how how you are feeling <laughs> about that after series also. Prove uh, me wrong, is yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> I dare you to prove me wrong. 
tell me this is a literary masterpiece. It, it will <laughs> only take 80 hours of your life. Yes. Who needs work anyways, right? <laughs> just two full weeks of work. No. God. Yeah. Well, you know. Awesome. Well, follow along. Uh, let us know what you think. Judge the book uh, by its cover also. Uh, and we'll see you or talk to you guys next week about Night Circus. Have an awesome week, everyone. Bye. Bye. We'd Rather Be Reading is an original podcast by Jerrica Siron and Leah Sanfer. The music for The Penguins, written and performed by David Allred from the album The Transition, courtesy of Erased Tapes. Please check him out on Spotify and check us out on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram at We'd Rather Be Reading and on Twitter at We'd Rather Read. You can also email us at We'd Rather Be Reading the Pod at gmail.com. Thanks for listening.